Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Eternal Palace, which is a game of dice placement, of painting, of trying to please the Emperor, and defeat the Master. I'm playing the solo mode today. The game is designed by Stephen Aramini, but the solo mode is designed by David Digby. What I'm doing should give you an idea for the two-player game as well. If you're unfamiliar with Eternal Palace, I have done a how-to-play video as well, but I'm going to be explaining everything that I'm doing as I'm doing it, so you should be able to follow along. Now, the solo mode has different difficulties. I am playing the easiest one for now. The, the harder difficulties give the master more points towards the end. It's harder to beat him at majority things. And the master has different personalities. I'm going with the one recommended for your first game, Balance. Before we get playing, I recommend you turn on the subtitles to the Klingon channel. If I've made any mistakes, they'll be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. And if you would like to help me keep making playthroughs, there are links in the description. You can support me on Patreon or Ko-fi or however you want, really. Thank you to everyone that does. It's the reason that this video exists. So I have some dice in front of me here. I have my three available dice. At the start of a multiplayer game, you would have three dice as well. But I also have some of the Master's Supply here. I'm not going to get to use these, but it's made up of a die of the Master's Colour and two unused player colour dice. At the top of the palace, we have my two remaining dice I'll be collecting throughout the game. The second die of the Master's Colour and the final unused player colour. They will all come into play for the Master's turns. For the roll phase, I roll all of the dice, and this is going to help us determine turn order and what we're going to get to do for the round. So my total is 3, 4, 5, and the Master's total is 12. So we adjust the turn order track, lowest first, I am going to be the first player here. We can pop the master's dice to one side for now. I need to plan. So I am going to form groups of my dice, essentially deciding where I am going to go on the board. To go to a numbered location, you have to have a group of that number. So I could go here to one, one, three. That would be kind of okay. I could get myself some advisor cards to start with, give me some abilities, maybe some resources, and try and get my hands on the Spring Pavilion. Getting monuments isn't a bad thing. I kind of think I'll leave them like that because, you know, you can get fewer actions, you could group them up, I could go to location five like this, but you can also adjust your dice. One wisdom adjusts one up or down by one, and two wisdom can turn a one into a six, or the other way around. So I think I'm going to leave them separately. So those groups are locked in now. For the master, we flip over the top card. Uh, out of the 17 solo cards, eight of them have the master's personality symbol that you're playing with. The others you don't need for this game. So we reveal a card and place the dice that the master has on the colored spaces. They are the master's groups. So now it's time to play. In turn order, we play groups of our dice. Now the master's priority is to play a group of dice of the same value of a group that I have, making me pay fish. So I want to go at least there once while it's free. So I'm going to come to location number one, the fish market. At the fish market, we draw three advisor cards from the top of the deck. These in the display here are not used. And we can either gain one of them for the cost that's on their banner. This means any resource. We start the game with one of each resource. It's wood, stone, cowlin, and bronze. I can pay the cost on the banner. I then have the card for whatever it does. And I also gain three fish. Or I can ignore the cost in the banner and pay three fish. So let's have a look at these cards. This is a trader. You can activate him once per round. I could pay a fish to get a wisdom. So wisdom usually will be used to adjust your dice. You can also use it at the Academy of Wisdom to recruit these advisors. Another trader, pay a wisdom to get two fish. It would be a nice little system having those two together. Gain a fish, essentially. And finally, we've got a benefactor. They are just an instant thing. They don't stay in front of you. They give you these things and then they're gone. I think I wouldn't mind getting some more wisdom. Now, if I'm going to go to the Spring Pavilion, that's a location that wants me to pay wood. I should actually have one wood in it to begin the game with. All of those locations should. Uh, yeah, I'm going to grab this guy. So I need wood. I have one of each resource to start the game with. So I think I'll pay stone to claim him. Because I paid for his cost, I also gain three fish. And I want to remember to use him before the end of the round. Now, one of the cards needs to be discarded and one goes on the top of the deck. I think this wouldn't be a bad one to have. Although... We know that the master is going to go straight here and the master discards them off the top of the deck. So I'm not going to be able to get whatever I put on the top of the deck anyway. So it doesn't really matter in this case. So that one's discarded. I have this one and at the end of my visit, I need to move my marker one space up the progress track. At these locations, we are racing to the top of this track. 
to claim a painting layer. Painting layers are worth points. If you're the first person to get to the top of the track and claim a painting layer, you can also claim a painting feature, which is also worth a point. Now, if I couldn't afford or didn't want a card, I would just discard two and put one back. Now for the master's turn, we look at his groups. His priority is to play a group with the same value as mine. I've got a group of one, he's got a group of one, so he will play that. He'll only come to locations if he can benefit from them. At a location with a progress track, that's can he go up the track? Yes, he can for now. He has special things that he does at locations. At the fish market, he gains three fish, you know, as if he'd paid for an advisor properly. He does start with two fish and two wisdom and no resources. He does not deal in resources. So he takes three fish, he steps up the progress track, and he discards two cards from the top of the advisor deck. He never recruits advisors. Now for me, if I want to go to the fish market again, I need to pay a fish because the master has dice there. I know he's not going to go to my spring pavilion or something. I think we're going to be out of each other's way for the rest of this round anyway. I'm going to come to the spring pavilion. Let's see a new place. So the spring pavilion is a monument location. You need to pay wood to gain the monument, the spring pavilion. The first person to go here, the cost is one wood. You pay the resources to the supply and then you take one of that resource from the supply and pop it on the space. So the next person to come here is going to have to pay two wood and it'll get more and more expensive. You get the monument. In the future though, someone going here will take the monument from you. Now there is no track at the monument locations. Instead, you move a space up the palace track and you also claim the painting layer. You can come here in the future, you just won't get the painting layer. And there's no uh, feature for doing this first. So the game does come with a lovely stand for all of your painting layers. You grab painting layer three. Now the game does come with, not great for a bird's eye camera shot, but lovely easels for you to have your paintings in and you can see them all built up. I'm just going to have mine flat on the table here so you can see it um, in all of its glory. So I gain painting layer three. Your painting layers go in numerical order, lower numbers at the back high numbers at the front. So I've got a painting layer. That's a point. The monument's a point. The game ends as soon as someone has eight painting layers. So the bot does not have any groups of dice that are the same as mine. So instead, he just plays his topmost group, which is a six. Location six is the stone quarry. He can benefit from it because he can go up the progress track. At a resource location, he just goes a step up the track because he doesn't get resources. If I was to come here, if I came here with one die, I would get one stone. If I came here with two or more dice grouped up to form six, I would get three resources. It's the same for the Forest of Abundance, but with wood. Finally, I just have my one, and I think I'm going to leave it the same. I'm going to go to the fish market again. So I'm going to pay a fish because the master is already there. And let's draw three advisors and have a look. So this is a diplomat. I need to give another player this thing to gain this thing from the supply. So I would be giving the master three fish. I would get two resources of my choice though, which could be massively helpful. Uh, spend a wisdom to get a resource of your choice. That's quite nice, especially since I can pay a fish to get a wisdom. It's an expensive card to get though, and I don't actually have wood or stone. So I would be paying fish to get this. It's tempting. Or another diplomat that's pay a fish to the master to get two wisdom from the supply. Could be building up a lot of wisdom. I think I'm going to go for this advisor and I'm going to pay the three fish so I don't gain any fish. I can ignore the banner cost and just pay fish instead. So I've only got two fish now, but they are quite nice. And I think why not just use their abilities? So this is going to leave me with just one fish. Pay a fish to get a wisdom. I wouldn't have to do that, but it makes sense to just do it, doesn't it? And then pay a wisdom to get any resource. I think let's give ourselves some options. Again, let's, uh, let's grab a stone. So they are used up now. Finally, the master is going to go to Serenity Bridge. At monument locations, the master gets the monument, moves a step along the palace track, and just like I did at the Spring Pavilion, gains the painting layer. They gain them just like me. So two points each at the moment. Then we have the restore phase. Players get their dice back, although, you know, I take custody of them for now because the master has difficulty rolling them. Restore your advisors, they'll be available again for the next round. Retire all the advisors at the academy. No one actually went to the academy. They are all discarded and we draw three new ones. It's the number of players plus one. In a, in a solo game, you are simulating a two player game. And then award dice at the palace. In a two or three player game, one player is gonna get one of their dice. It's the player with the fewest dice. At the start of the game, we've got three each. If there's a tie, it's the player who's furthest ahead in the palace track. If there's a tie there, it's the player who is furthest ahead in turn order. So I am going to get 
my fourth dice. And next time, it's definitely going to be the master. And we are ready for the next round. So we can roll the dice up and work out our total. So it's much less likely I'm going first because I've got more dice. Let's see, eight, nine, ten. Although actually the master has rolled 13. So I'm still first. They will still definitely get the die though because they have fewer dice. And then work out the groups. So I could go to the fish market loads again. I, it would depend on the cards that would come out. I like, oh, I should go up the track again, shouldn't I? If I go to the fish market one more time, then I'm at the top, I get the painting layer, I get the feature, and it's all great. So I think I'll, I definitely want a group of one. I could even adjust the die and go to the Academy of Wisdom instead. You know, adjust it with one of my wisdom to a two. I'm hoping that I can pay for the thing at the fish market to gain some fish to be able to do my adjustments with. Now four is the forest of abundance. Going there with one die though just gets you one wood. Oh, we need to increase the cost of Serenity Bridge as well when uh, the master goes there. I could group them all up. You know, I could go to the eight location, the dragon kiln, pay my cowl in to gain that monument. And it's another layer while it's cheap. Uh, the master doesn't care about the cost of it though. The master can just go there no matter what. I think, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep these separate and we'll see how that goes. The master draws a new card and let's see how they are grouping their dice up. So we have pink and the green and the blue. So they are just doing two actions. Six and seven. It's me first though, and it looks like they're not getting in my way. I think let's start out at the fish market then. Draw three of these advisors and see what we can do with them. Two fish to get a resource. Give him three resources to take any monument, especially at the end of the game, that could be really nice. It's a zero sum thing, taking away a point from him to give it to me if he's got a monument. And this is whenever I go to these resource locations, I now kind of wish I'd separated these and gone to a four twice. So whenever I go to a resource location, I also get a stone. I've got a stone. Yeah, it's not gonna help me this round, but I think that's gonna help me out massively in the future. I am gonna recruit this advisor so she can go there and I need to pay a stone for it. But in exchange, since I paid the banner cost, I get three fish. I think let's put the monument one back on the top. Maybe we'll take that if we come here again. And I have got another one. What was the cost of it? It was anything. Hmm. Now the master never collects resources. So if you were to give them a resource, it, you just give it to the supply and he takes a wisdom from the supply instead. Oh, subtitle as well. The master came to where I was, didn't he? So he should have gone down his decision tree. His first decision tree is, can he spend a fish to be allowed to go there? Yes, he can. Because I was already at the location, wasn't I? So the master can't get in my way. He is going to play a six at the stone quarry. He just moves up the track. He's definitely going to get there first. Now, I'm tempted to modify this eight into a nine. Go to the cowlin mine. With two dice, I would get one cowlin, but I would also get a stone there. But no, save that for next time. I'm going to just, yeah, play my one here at the fish market so there's already a color of dice there me so i've got to pay that fish but i can get the layer here so three cards i am limited on my resources though but i can spend a, a wisdom to get one can't i so here we go a cowlin wherever i whenever i go to a resource location i also get a cowlin building those up could be really nice but i am about to go to the dragon kiln where i need to pay a cowlin to gain the monument cowlin and a bronze to get this advisor instantly get a monument and then, oh yeah, the one we put back. I think this one. We could get a cowlin as well. Yeah, let, let's spend a cowlin to get him, which also gives us three fish. And I'm going to put him back. And then I think I need to do my spend a fish to get a wisdom, spend a wisdom to get a resource. I could adjust this into a nine and just go to the cowlin mine where I would get two cowlin and a stone now. But no. We will just get a cowlin and carry on with the plan. We will go to the dragon kiln next with our eight but i have not progressed along the fish market i am at the top of the track now so i remove the feature token i'm going to get layer number one there we go the painting builds up a bit and i also get to choose a feature which one doesn't particularly matter it's just whatever you like the look of and we can just bob ross it into the distance over there that's another point the master is going to location number seven now at the temple of wisdom you get three wisdom. And depending on which dice combination you come here with, you put a marker on one of the spaces. We don't actually take any notice of which dice the master came here with. We just put him a marker on because he's going to get one. Even if he came here with the same combination, he gets another marker. Two markers gets you a layer. If you're the first person to have two markers here, you get the feature. I'm going to location eight. It's one cowlin, which I have to get the dragon kill. I pop another one on there, gain the monuments and painting layer number eight. There we go, we'll have that down there. 
And that's it for the round. We get our dice back. Oh, I need to move up the palace track. My advisors come back. These advisors go away. An award dice at the palace. The master gets his second die of his colour last. So he gets the other separate one. And then we roll. Let's see what we can come up with this time. I want to try and grab a load of resources. Ones and twos. So I have rolled seven. The master has rolled ten. So turn order is going to be the same. If I can stay ahead on the palace track, I will get my die first again. So they can go over to the master's side. What do I want to do? I would quite like to go to the Academy of Wisdom. Oh, he's ended up in there now. I want resources. So actually, if I grouped these up and went as a four to the Forest of Abundance, that's two dice, so it would get me three wood and a stone and a cowlin. That seems like a good thing to do. I'm already at the top of the fish market now, so I'm less inclined to go there. I think, yeah, let's go to the Academy of Wisdom and then I'm going to save this. I think I'm going to try and adjust it with some wisdom and go to the Eternal Bridge. We'll see how that goes. As for the Master, let's see what they're doing. So they are putting blue and yellow together up there and then green and pink there. So what do we share here? It's just the one, isn't it? So I should go there for... I'm not actually going to go there, though. So they can block that off for me if they want. I'm not going to go to the fish market. They don't know that. Let's go to the Forest of Abundance. So I've come here with two dice. Go up the track. I get three wood and then also a cowlin and a stone. Master does their top thing. They're going to the stone quarry. They just move up. They are grabbing a feature and layer six. I'm going to go to the Academy of Wisdom. I am going to recruit this guy. I don't think I'm going to use him until the end of the game, but I can pay any resource. So I'll just pay a wood and I get two wisdom for paying his banner cost, which is going to help me when I'm manipulating the dice. I go up the track. I might as well do my thing as well. Pay a fish to get a wisdom. Wisdom to get a resource. I don't need a particular resource. Let's go for maybe... No, let's go for stone in case we go to Serenity Bridge. I've got the two stone. I would need to take that bridge off him. Okay, he... Oh, his priority would be to play the one, wouldn't it? It doesn't make any difference because I'm not actually going to one. Yeah, if he's got one the same as me, he would go there first. So he moves up the track. He gets three fish and he discards the top two cards of the deck. We've nearly gone through that. And I am actually going to spend two wisdom to adjust my six, my one into a six. So it's one wisdom to adjust it up or down by one, two wisdom to turn a one into a six or the other way around. You can go to the Eternal Bridge. Only one die can come here at a time. Uh, you advance the number of spaces according to the pips on your die. So I'm going to advance one, two, three, four, five, six spaces and you gain all the rewards you are on or have moved over. So I get a fish and a wisdom right now, which is nice. But later on, I can get more resources. I can get a free advisor and eventually a painting layer and feature if I'm the first up there. The master is going to location three. Oh dear, they are taking the spring pavilion from me. Moving a step up the palace track. Oh, that's okay. We're tied. I'll still get the die first. And they make it more expensive to do in the future. Wish I'd hung on to my wood now. I could get it again next time. And then that's it, isn't it? So dice back. Reset your advisors. Award a die. Tied on the palace track, I'm first in turn order, so I get mine. Reset these advisors, and we're going to have to shuffle. Okay, and then I think we are ready to roll. Okay, so a bit more variety this time. 5, 8, 11, 14 to the masters, 9, 12, 15. So I'm still going first. And let's see how we want these grouped up. I would like to go to a resource location. I would like to go to number 4 again, to be honest. Might end up with too much wood from that, but keep going up the track I've already started so we could do that say with a three and a one keep getting advisors keep going up the academy of wisdom I've got a lot of resources to do that with with a two and then five we could go to the I've got stone we could grab the bridge and I will have wood I could gain the spring pavilion back it's just I've already got the painting layer from number three oh which actually um bot should have so we are neck and neck on painting layers yeah so it's good to have the monument back but more keen on new layers why don't we go to the Eternal Bridge with the five and adjust this with Wisdom to go to the bridge instead of the Pavilion? Or maybe the Academy again? Yeah. There's my groups. Master is going for these groups. And I'm first again. So they're going to try and get in the way of three, but I'm not actually going there. They won't either. Because they'll only go there if they can gain the monument. And they're not going to be able to gain the monument because they've got it. Same for five, actually. Unless I take it from them. 
So there's going to be some adjusting and messing about going on. In case they adjust it to a four, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want him in my way for going to the Forest of Abundance. So I'm going there with two dice. I get three wood and a cowlin and a stone and move up the track and maybe just go there again. It's only with one die, but I'd be at the top and then it's done with. Now, Master's turn. I've got a three and a five. He, if there's a tie, he uses the top one. So he'll go to the Spring Pavilion, but his question is, can he gain the monument? No, because he's already got it. So we come down to his decision tree here. Can he spend fish to be allowed to go there? No. If the master's using a single die, can he use it to go ahead on the Eternal Bridge? Yes. And actually, he would get right in my way by doing that. Uh, so he's going to move one, two, three and gain a fish. Now, normally, when he goes to the Eternal Bridge, he will spend wisdom to get his die to at least a four. The minimum amount of wisdom to get his die to a four or more. But for this decision here, it said without spending fish. So I think he just goes there with the three. So I can still go there. I'll just have to pay a fish to do it, which I've got. Now, I want him to play that five first, because if I play the five, he's just going to go there straight after and take it right back. So I think let's keep going along the academy for now. Yeah. So which advisor would I like to gain? Just pay a stone and get a load of wisdom. Turn a resource into any other resource. Turn a resource into two wisdom. I think I'm just going to pay a cowlin. And we'll just get these four wisdom. Might help me when things get a bit more full up and there's particular places I want to go. And then move up the Academy of Wisdom. I also get two wisdom, don't I, for paying properly for the advisor. I have a five. He has a five. So we will go to Serenity Bridge. I know he's already, he's already got Serenity Bridge, hasn't he? That's the one he plays, though. He can't make it better with fish. Oh, no, he will spend the wisdom. It's without spending fish. He will spend a wisdom to make that a four. So he went up four spaces, which gets him a wisdom back. So now... The decision here is he can't go to the Eternal Bridge without spending fish because he's already got a die there. So he will move on. Can he adjust the die up by one to benefit from this location? No, because up by one is the stone quarry. He's already at the top of that. Can he spend a wisdom to move it down by one to benefit? Yes, he can move it down by one by spending a wisdom and come to the Forest of Abundance where he just moves his marker up. So now he's racing me for that. We just have to pay a fish as well because I'm there. But now I'm free to go to Serenity Bridge, pay my two stone. One of them can go here as an extra cost now. Take the Serenity Bridge and take painting layer number five. Build up my lovely painting. Bot is going to seven. They put their second marker down, which is going to get them painting layer seven and another feature. And then I, I'm not going to location three, am I? I do want the Spring Pavilion back, but not urgently. Now going to location four, I'm there and the master's there. So that's going to cost me two fish. It'll get me loads of resources, but why not just wait? At the Academy of Wisdom, I only have to pay one extra fish because it's just me that's there. Oh, I didn't gain the person, did I? Who was I gaining? Yeah, change the resource to another resource, spend in a wood, and then, yeah, turn a resource into two wisdom. I, I kind of like. I'll just spend wood again for it. And then I get two wisdom for paying for the person properly. And I move up, which gets me painting layer two. And there is a benefit, you know, the most consecutive layers gets a prize, which is worth an extra point at the end of the game. So at the moment, I've got one, two, three, five, eight. Four is not far off. Six and seven are kind of far off, and they haven't got features, whereas the, the two is going to get me another feature as well. Okay, we're done. They're going to gain their die, aren't they? We've got all of our dice now. Oh, I went to the Serenity Bridge, so I should be up on the Palace track, which is another award to think of. And you go away. I didn't use my stuff. Yeah, let's use it. Spend a fish to get a wisdom. Spend a wisdom to get a resource. Let's get bronze. And turn a resource into another resource. Let's turn stone into cowlin. Let's get the more difficult things. Turn a resource into two wisdom? Not just yet, I don't think so. So they get reset. You go away. And then three more cards are coming in. Got loads of wisdom. We should be able to get any die result we want. And it's time for some more rolling. So my total is going to be 6, 12, 14, 15, 4, 8, 12, 15. Uh, we keep the same order if there's a tie. Oh, actually, they didn't roll a die, so they will have higher. I didn't take one off. Just thinking, why, why have they only got four dice? Because the invisible green one they had. Right, so I, I do want to go to four again, don't I? I kind of want to do it with two dice so I get the three wood again. And then we don't really have to think about that location anymore. Tempting to go to the Eternal Bridge with a six and then a four puts me at the end of it. And then that's just done. That's a layer. That'll be my sixth layer. I'm getting my seventh at the Forest of Abundance. If we can get to like the Noble Ox, that's my eighth layer. So I don't know what I would do with this one. 
probably want to try and snatch some monuments as well. We'll just leave it as a one. At worst, we can go get fish with it. Probably just adjust it to a six and go up the stone quarry. Wouldn't be as helpful, but that layer would be an extra consecutive thing. Or we just adjust it to location two and get this advisor to instantly get me the monument. And then I don't have to give him three resources and three wisdom. Yeah, I'll have those groups. The master makes his groups and it's going to be oh a great big group. Now you've got to make sure when he's making groups of three or even four dice, because his, his second die is in play now, the color basically gets grouped together. So he's now got a group of four dice going somewhere. You've got to make sure it's not over 12. Four, eight, 11, 14. What happens here is you take one of the lowest value dice, if this would make the total lower than 12, and put it on its own row of just one die. Because you can't have a group higher than 12. It doesn't help you. So now he's going to have an 11, a 4, and a 3. Okay. And I'm first. Been first the whole game. Just the rolls. So where's he going to try and go? He's going to try and get in my way at 4. Yeah, so I want to go there first, don't I? So the Forest of Abundance, I'm in there with 2 dice. I get my 3 wood, 1 cowlin, 1 stone. Move up the track to the top. I get layer 4 and a feature. Let's go for this lovely puffy tree. I've still got a group of 4. So the master will try and spend that. Can't go to four without spending a fish. But his decision tree is like, could you spend a fish? Yes, he could. Comes here and goes up the track. I want to go to the eternal bridge before he gets stuck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gets me a wisdom and a fish and a resource of my choice. Let's go for stone in case we need to go and get the bridge back or something. Master will just play his top group. What's he got? 11. He's going to go to the bronze forge because he can go up the track. Pops up there. It's a resource location though, so he's not going to do anything else. I am going to the Eternal Bridge again, so I need to pay a fish because I'm already there. One, two, three, four. Get me an advisor without paying. Let's go for get me a monument. That suits me. It's an advisor from the display without paying. And then I'm at the top of the Eternal Bridge, so I get the EB layer and another feature. Go for another statue. And yeah. The master then goes to location three because they can take the pavilion from me. Oh. Yeah, didn't I just use the card to gain this? Should have thought about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they take that from me. I have got loads of wood, though. I could come here and take it from them if I really needed to. And have they got location three? Yes, they have. I don't really want to go to place number one. I think I was going to spend two wisdom, wasn't I, to adjust this to a six. So I could go to the stone quarry. It gets me a... Two stone and a cowlin, and I go up the track a bit. And that is it for another round. I don't think if I even particularly want to use these things. I do kind of want to build up resources. I could definitely spend a wisdom to get a resource. Bronze in case I need one. But yeah, fish. I'm actually running a bit low on. So I probably want this advice to get me a load of fish. That's all straightened out. I've reset all of that stuff, I think. No more dice to award. Let's see what we roll. And I might be able to end this. So, oh, I've rolled really high for the last round. Uh, what was that? Oh, dear, that was a four, wasn't it? So that's 15, 19, 23. And the master has rolled 11, 14, 16, 19. So for a change, the master is going first. And I have to work out my groups. So 10 is the noble ox. And that would just get me a layer. That's what I want the most, I think. Then what have I got? Nine, thirteen's no good. Eight is the dragon kiln, which I already have. I mean, a four, and then adjust it to a three to go and get the spring pavilion. Uh, I don't have to pay him resources to do it. And then nine is the cowl in mine, which I haven't moved up at all. Yeah, I'm happy with that, and we could adjust it to a ten if needed. And then for the master's dice, his blues go together and make him a little five, and a three, and an eleven. So he's going first. I do not actually have those numbers. So he is going to 11. The Bronze Forge gets to the top, gets layer 11 and a feature. I am going to go to number 10, pay a bronze, and it gets more expensive. I get the Noble Ox, and I get layer 10. Master goes to location 3, but they've already got the Pavilion. They can't spend fish to make this better. They can go to the Eternal Bridge. They'll spend one wisdom to make it a four. So they move one, two, three, four spaces. They gain a fish and a wisdom at that space. I am going to adjust. They're going to go to Sobranity Bridge, aren't they? But I can, I can use my thing to get that back. Yeah, let's adjust this four to a three and go to the Spring Pavilion. 
and I need to pay my four wood, one can go on the space to get the Spring Pavilion back. Master will go to Serenity Bridge. Oh, we need to be going up here. And I also got the Noble Ox to take my Serenity Bridge away, which I could afford to go and get there. I haven't got a group anywhere near a five though. I could have kept them separate. But what I can do is give him three resources, which actually translates to three wisdom for him and take a monument thanks to my advice my diplomat and then i'm going to location nine apparently why not the cowlin mine i went here with two dice so i get one cowlin two cowlin and a stone and that is that i triggered the end of the game i get the completion prize for being the first to have eight layers that's worth a point now on apprentice difficulty the easiest one that i'm playing the sequence prize is awarded normally player with the best sequence of layers. If there's a tie though, the master gets it. So he has not got a good consecutive thing at all. He's got five, six, seven. He actually only ended up with three, five, six, seven, eleven. He only ended up with five. A nice few layers, a nice few features. Uh, so I get the sequence prize. I think I've really done him here. Uh, leader in the palace track gets three points. Second place gets one point as long as he's gone at least half as far as the first player. Now, any place that the master is ahead of me on the track that still has a feature, he claims the feature. There's actually nowhere on the board like that. So in this case, working out the points, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. And then the master would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not done very well at all. He hasn't really got a focus though in balance mode. This is why it's the recommended one for the beginner. He just kind of does a bit of everything. If I was to play on the journeyman difficulty though, we would have the same thing with the features. Any track he's furthest up on that's still got a feature remaining, he would now claim. The sequence, you would have to have a sequence of at least four and for it to be better than the masters. That is still true. He would get a wisdom for every three fish in his supply. So he's got six fish. That would gain him two wisdom. And then for every two wisdom, two, four, six, eight, he moves a step along the palace track. So we would effectively swap those. He would now be first place on the palace track. And in addition, he would get an extra point for every space he had gone past eight. It's basically I would lose two points. He would gain two points. If we were to play on expert difficulty though, and this is still with the introductory personality, he claims all of the unclaimed features. So there are two unclaimed features. He would get those as well. You would have to have a sequence of at least seven painting layers. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, haven't I? So he would get the sequence prize. And then the same thing would happen with his fish and his wisdom to move him along the track. But he gets an extra point for every space beyond five that he moved. So you'd get an extra three there. So in this scenario, I would now be getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So the master's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 16, 17. So much differently when he is given those extra things in the harder scorings. As you might expect, it's a harder difficulty. Uh, but also, as I said, depending on his personality, he will behave very differently. He's... Uh, it's a bit more, yeah, wishy-washy in the balance thing. He's giving you a chance in that one, whereas uh, some of his other personalities in particular, they, they change the cards that he has, but also the decisions that he'll make, which can make him a lot more focused on monuments and things like that. But there we go. There is Eternal Palace in its solo mode. I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you an idea of what the game is like. If you'd like to see more, I've done hundreds of playthroughs on this channel. I hope you will enjoy many of them. And you can help me keep making more in these ways. Thank you very much for watching this, though. And I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.